Right, this video is a quick demo on what to do with tables in Excel to um, put them into a report. So we've got some raw data here. Let's zoom in to see it. And it's about temperatures and times. So it's a kinetic experiment. And we've got averages and errors and a percentage error. And I think what most people end up doing is you do this and you think, oh, well, I haven't I can't see the the titles of all these, so if I double click that, it'll make them really wide and make them all fit. And then you'll highlight all of it, add bounding boxes and borders to everything, copy it, dump it into Word and go, oh, it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. And then faff around with trying to resize everything or even worse, you'll right click and paste it as an image and then it's just scale it down. And that will really break if you say, Let's put it in here in a two column layout. And if I put it in here, well, it definitely doesn't fit. So I'll put it in as an image and then it reduces down. And you know, honestly, this, this, this hurts me. You, you, you can't read this. This is not what you should be doing. Uh, so the rule of thumb usually is if you can't fit your table into this two column layout, you are using uh, too much data. You're, you're including too many things. So rather than faffing around technically, Let's start with thinking critically about what we want to actually show and demonstrate. So let's do this and go back to the beginning. What do we see here? Well, we've got this here. It's called an approximate temperature. And this was the temperature that I set a water bath at. And these are suspiciously round numbers um, because here, Oh, it actually wasn't zero degrees. It was slightly above zero degrees. Oh, it hadn't quite got to 45 degrees because maybe it's slightly cooler. This one was slightly overly warm. Okay, fair enough. That's allowed. And the thing is with reporting data, we don't care as much about what you intended to do. We really do care about what you did do and the actual temperature is what you did do. So bye-bye uh, that, you can get rid of it. You can mention that those are the um, temperatures you set your water bath to in an experimental section. We don't need it for raw data. And then we've got these two competing temperatures here. We've got Kelvin and C uh, centigrade Celsius, whichever. Um, Fahrenheit if you're American, but don't... Uh, which one is more important? Well, if this is kinetic data for an activation energy experiment, for instance, then Kelvin's what we want because that's what goes into the Arrhenius equation. So we can actually drop that. We don't really need it. We don't need to know what Celsius is if we've got Kelvin there. Again, put it somewhere else. Say that you've set those to the... Um, or you pick one or the other. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to pick Kelvin for now. And now we don't need to say that it's actual temperature. That is just the temperature. Act, the word actual is almost implied there. In fact, we don't even need to write the word temperature because pretty standard, it's known as T. Uh, capital T for temperature. And then lowercase t for time, for instance. So what we've got here is, in fact, is an average time in seconds. So we can actually put lowercase t. There we go. There's a little bit better. It looks a bit nicer. We don't have to, this stuff with temperature that we don't need. Now the question is, do we need this? I'm not usually a massive fan of calling things runs, but OK, whatever. Do we even need them? Is it data that's pertinent? Um, if we're doing rigorous statistics on it, maybe but also we can hide that away in supplementary information, not necessarily getting rid of it and not reporting it, but that is information we can stash uh, somewhere other than the main document. We're not interested in it. We don't need to know that we did one thing and it was 78 seconds, the other one was 76 seconds. We're just interested in the average. So that's one thing we can add. And the error uh, in, see, well, we can leave that as is, but do which one do we want to report? Do we want to report the percentage error or the absolute error? Uh, I would usually only go for one, unless the fact that there are two different things tells us something. For instance, percentage errors tend to systematically get bigger as your measurement gets smaller. Um, remember, 10 plus or minus one is a bigger percentage than 100 plus or minus one. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of that and don't need it. So actually, that massive table only needs three columns reported. We don't need to use all of this. Uh, another thing I'm going to just tidy the decimal places up. I'm going to have that to one decimal place. 
and that I'm going to add to one decimal place and that I'm going to add to one decimal place. We can do stuff like truncating those together, um, concatenating them and maybe I'll do that another time but we can leave it as this. Uh, and I'm going to centre them just to make them um, relatively neat. And what we can even do here in Excel is go to format as a table and pick the table style that we want. Uh, and there we have, it's really useful. It's it's given these, these what are known as tiger stripes sometimes, um, which tells you what row everything is on. It's really nice if you can run along a big row of data, for instance, and find that they're all the same color so your eyes can track along it. Smaller tables, it's not 100% necessary, but we can use it. So what happens if I now copy that and go into our two column layout? I'm just going to control V. There it is, that's the numbers there. Um, this is not as an Excel object, it's not as an image, it just fits. And what I'm going to go to do is the table tool is highlighted and under layout there's this thing called auto fit. And then we've got three options. We auto fit the contents, which will usually suck it all down to just fit whatever's there. We can auto fit the column width. I don't even know what that even does. Um, and auto fit the window, which actually just doesn't fit the whole window that you see. It's actually the, the column here. So that's a little bit better, right? Now we can see that we've got some clear numbers. They're all titled up nicely. They look nice, right? That's a little bit better. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we need to know what the uh, these headers actually mean. So we could then start going uh, references, insert caption, figure one. And I've got my figure one. Actually, let's do it properly. Let's call it a table. Call it table one. Ooh, that's a table one I. I've got the chapter number in there for some reason. Um, so <clears throat> we can start typing what this is. Um, data used in the Arrhenius equation. Now the caption needs to start telling us new things. So let's put in that new data, right? So let's see what we can do here. We can put in an asterisk there. And at the bottom we can do asterisk um, time average of four data points. Uh, an error here I've got this character in autocorrect. Dagger. Dagger. Um, standard deviation. Uh, sample of four data points. Fair enough, you can keep it like that. So that's a lot more useful uh, and a lot more readable for what we're gonna do. Maybe I'll go stick that as a figure so I've got it there. I could even stick the table caption at the top. So now that's a lot more readable. We've thought critically about what data we want to put into the report and we've also formatted it in a way that's very very readable and added more information as well. So rather than presenting every single run, because I'm not going to read it, no one's going to read it, we copy and paste it maybe to do more data analysis if you want to fix things. Um, but we're really interested in how many data points did you have and what is your error? Is it a standard deviation? Is it a standard error? Is it a confidence interval? And you can put that all in the caption to make it more useful.